Hey there! I'm going to make today a Reuben witch and I have a good story about this recipe. Back in the 1980s, which yes is more than 35 years ago when this happened, my boss who um, was a chef and his wife was a chef, he was a wonderful man, and he came in one day and had a recipe he'd cut out of a magazine. I believe it was put in the magazine with an advertisement for a yeast company. Anyway, he he brought it to me and said, Debbie, take this recipe home tonight and try it and see if you like it. So I did, and we loved it, and we've had it on many occasions for many years. It's a great thing to cook for um, any kind of gathering where you're getting a bunch of people together, and um, it makes an easy way to eat a sandwich, and it's really good for St. Patrick's Day. So okay. here we go. It's called a Reuben Witch. So here we go. We start with three and a fourth cups of flour. I only put two and a fourth cups in here for now and reserved the other cup for later. We put a tablespoon of sugar, a teaspoon of salt, and a tablespoon of butter. We use this recipe calls for the rapid rise yeast and a cup of warm water. And the water still feels kind of warm, a little too warm maybe. I'm going to put a little bit cool water in it. Hang on. I don't want to kill my yeast. So I'm going to put my yeast in here first and dissolve it. It's not a hard recipe. It's really not, and it looks really pretty. When it's all finished. So that's going to, I'm going to let it proof a little bit just to make sure that the yeast is good. Even though I checked the expiration date on it, it's always a good idea to look at it and after you've added it to the water and make sure it bubbles up a little bit. It's already kind of starting to do that. Then you don't end up having done all the work and uh, find out that your yeast wasn't any good because things can happen that will kill the yeast on its way to you or by adding water that's too hot to it. So it's looking good starting to these little bubbles over here they're growing yep they'll be growing and you'll see a little movement in there and as that happens well then you know that the yeast is good so I usually wait five minutes or so but for me, this looks like it's good, so I'm going to add it, and we're just going to go with it. So, this is all we do to this. We're just going to mix this up. Now, out of the cup of the, a cup of flour that you have left, you're just going to add whatever you need to make this into dough that you can easily work with. And it may be that we don't need much at all. We'll see. Looks pretty good. We're in a drier um, climate here, and that, that can make a difference in recipes, believe it or not. So, we'll just add a little bit to it on the outside to keep it from sticking to my hands so much. And now you're supposed to knead it for, I think it says about four minutes. Yep. So, kneading it, you know, with yeast breads, the more you work them, at least to a point, the better it makes your yeast work. 
otherwise with things with baking soda and baking powder you don't want to spend a lot of time working with them because it can make those tough you don't want to make them tough but this is uh, as you can see it looks good it's starting to look really nice and pliable dough Very pretty. So we're making it for what tonight, Jim? For the football game. <laughs> <laughs> we do like to watch some college football. And our friends uh, park next to us, Phoenix Ramblers, and uh, Some Days Here uh -huh. are parked over there. And they both love SEC Conference. Of course, that's not our conference since we're from Oklahoma, but um, we're going to go watch the game with them. And I have to be on the opposite side from them because I felt like they needed somebody who was for the other team. So we're rooting for Clemson tonight. Clemson tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Even though it doesn't matter too much to us. So what I've done, you can use a greased pan for this. I just really like parchment paper. It's so so easy and I think I put my rolling pin right here we're just gonna roll this out and it's gonna take a little while so don't get impatient might put it out here on the deal and then lift it up onto there in a minute. So I'll have more room to work. But you basically want to make it cover the whole square as much as possible. Thank you, Buffer. Looking good. It feels good. It's easy to easy to work with. Okay. Stick it up on here. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put the ingredients in the middle of this. So we're going to start with a quarter cup of um, dressing, Thousand Island dressing. Hold on, excuse me. I'm just going to spread this right down the middle. Yum. Smells good already. Okay. And we're going to put layer beef. This is corned beef. Sliced thin.
this is Swiss cheese. We're going to use about six ounces of it. I think what the, orig the original recipe actually says is a uh, quarter, quarter of a pound, which is a tiny bit less than that. But, and this is uh, six ounces of corned beef. Now we're going to put this cheese in it. I'm just going to sprinkle this cheese through the whole thing, just like this. And then next, I'm going to put some sauerkraut. And it calls for an 8 ounce can of sauerkraut. So that's only about half of this. We're just going to kind of put it on there. Kind of squeeze some of the juice out or you can drain it beforehand. Looks yummy. I haven't made this in a long time, huh? No, but I like it. Talking to my videographer over here. Okay, we're going to get it all there in the middle really well. And now, now comes the tricky part. The only tricky part, really. going to take a knife and we're going to cut strips on the side all the way from the filling to the edge just like this Same thing on the other side. I know it's not low carb. There are some things in it that are really good for you, like sauerkraut. But um, it's just a recipe I thought you guys might enjoy. It's always a fun thing to take to some kind of a potluck. So, here we go. Okie dokie. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fold the strips in like this. Start down on that end. And then we're going to alternate the sides. So it looks pretty cute. When it's all done, look a little bit fancy. I'm not typically fancy, but this looks a little a little pretty. Now don't worry too much if you have a little bit of stuff leaking out because we're going to let it rise for a little bit out on top of the stove and it's going to fill in some of that area. You don't want big gaps where you have a lot of stuff running out. But a little bit won't make any difference. Okay. Start down here at this other end, kind of meet down there in the middle.
have more strips on one side than the other. That's happened before. You just, you know, you just make it work. Okay, we're going to kind of see if we can keep all these edges, make sure they're kind of covered up so it doesn't leak too much. And like I said, we're going to now put it on top of a pan with boiling water in it. So I've had some water heating up. We're going to put it in this. Okay. Put the water in there. Find me a Warm it up a little bit and help it rise. Now, yeah, it looks pretty good. Not perfect, but pretty good. Okay, and that's all we're going to do for right now. We're going to let it rise about 15 20 minutes until we get um, a lot of these places or kind of put together and so it's not going to leak and we're going to set our oven for 400 so about when the oven gets to 400 is probably about when we're going to be ready to take this and put it in the oven and then we have a couple more things to do before we put it in the oven other than that it's really not that hard okay Okay, so this has been setting for over 15 minutes now, and you can see that it's risen. What I have here is a beaten egg white, so we're putting this egg wash on it. What does that do? It makes it shiny, also it's going to hold it together. Also serves one more purpose in this case, and that is it's going to hold the caraway seeds on, because you know those little delicious seeds that come on uh, rye bread. We're going to sprinkle some of those on here, and it's going to be yummy, I'm pretty sure. We just sprinkle a lot of those on there. It's looking better. Okay, now we're going to put it in the oven, 400 degrees, about 25 minutes. It's now done, out of the oven, and it we're going is to beautiful. move it over here to this. And when we get over there in front of everybody, we'll cut a piece off for you to see. Okay. Okay, so here we are out here at the Reuben Witch. With the Reuben Witch, going to watch the ball game. And who's going to win? Well. <laughs> Is that Clemson? I don't want to make a prediction like that. <laughs> here you go. Yum. Yum, yum, yum. That's is it done? good. Well, I think it is. Okay. Very good. SEC is in this front row, and they're putting us ACC in the back row. <laughs> this is ACC food, y'all. Um, SEC. It's delightful. It is not poisoned, I promise. Mm -mm. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> Mm. We had the best ACC fans in the country. Right? Well, there you go. For sure. And here they are. Go Big Ten. <laughs>